fellow woodworkers and distinguished guests. By the way, we have a lady in the front in the pink. And uh, somebody who's in the back, who's that lady up there? By the way, it's uh, Dennis's better half. So he brought along his wife tonight. I think it's because of the birthday, but I think she wanted to learn about the uh, pan tree. So. Anyway, tonight we're going to have a presentation on genealogy and the tree building. And uh, I was thinking, you know, pretty well all that we do in this club is related to a tree. Uh, we, do, uh, we make our way into the forest and we, and we cut down a tree with all these beautiful branches and we take it to our respective uh, workshop and we create these beautiful creations of art. And then we bring them into the club every week and we brag about it. So we got some more stuff here tonight to brag about later on. So the topic tonight is not wood related, but it's tree related. And uh, we take all of our family members and we uh, assemble them all together into a family tree format. And with all that, all those family members' branches, and we make a family tree. And it's a great process to help us learn about ourselves and our extended families. So tonight I'm pleased to introduce to you uh, Nancy Trumbull. It was certainly an expert on this subject. Nancy comes to us with high credentials. She is a retired pharmacist who is now following her passion for family history. She has earned her professional learning certificate in genealogy studies at the University of Toronto in 2004. Nancy is currently the owner of Tremble Family History Services and uh, offers lecturing research, and DNA analysis services. <coughs> Currently, she volunteers as the chair of the Durham Region Branch of the Ontario Genealogy Society. <coughs> so Nancy, welcome, and we are certainly pleased that you've taken this time out of your busy schedule to come and talk to the Durham Woodworking Club about genealogy. We look forward to your presentation. Well, I'm very pleased to be here. I have to admit, I was also a little surprised. And, and I will try and, uh, and uh, tie in woodworking at the very end, oh, if I can. Over okay. So I'm calling it your family story because really the story of your ancestors is your story because you are what you are and who you are and your likes and your dislikes because of the way you were raised and I honestly believe there's a lot of traits that are in your genes and they come through in surprising ways sometimes. So anyway... I'm going to start with computer programs. People always ask me what programs to put their family history into. And I have several suggestions. And I want to get that out of the way because that seems to be a burning issue when people ask me about family history. They are really quite advantageous to have a, an electronic computer program. You don't have to. You can keep it all on paper if you want to. But I'm looking around at this wonderful setup here and thinking, some of you must have a computer. <laughs> okay? Some of you, at least. Um, th it's very easy to print a variety of very attractive charts for other family members from your program. I started this when I was 15 years old. And I'd get cousins or aunts and uncles that would say, I'd like a copy. Well, let me tell you, that was before computers, BC. And they are very hard to hand draw. So I love computers. And there are some free ones out there. You don't have to spend any money to get a, download a program onto your computer to keep tabs on your family. So. 
Legacy Family Tree, Roots Magic, and My Heritage all offer free programs, or free versions of their programs. I have a handout that is going to be sent out to the members and has the links where to find these on the web. So you don't have to write this down. So how do you do family history? Calvin mentioned why, sort of. <laughs> And, and the reason why is different for every single person, so I'm, I'm not going to spend time there. I've got a half an hour, so you're getting, the, you're getting the whirlwind tour. So there's five basic steps on how you work on your family history. You have to follow a plan, or you end up with a total muddle, and you end up with piles of paper this high, all over the place. I've been there. I'll guarantee you will have that many piles. So, you have to, first you start with, what do you know? What do you have? Look around your house. Do you have photos? Certificates? Heirlooms? Family things that came down? Woodworking items, perhaps? Decide what pieces you're still missing out of your family tree. Focus on one person at a time. Start with yourself and go backwards to your parents and then out to your siblings and your aunts and uncles. Then you have to decide what, re uh, what records you want to go and search in. And I'm going to touch on that briefly. You search it. And then you have to look at that and analyze the information. Does it make sense? Is it really your person? There's a lot of people out there named John Brown and Bob Smith. So you have to make sure you get the right person. And then you repeat that process. So, search your memory. Write it down and put it in a computer program. Put in date estimates where, you have, where you've got some holes just to help you sort of keep things lined up. You want certificates of any type. Believe me, any type. It can be Sunday school certificates. <coughs> military certificates, birth, marriage, and death certificates, invitations to weddings, to 50th anniversary parties, um, birth announcements. I've got a ton of those that my mother received, and they'd be very useful. You're going to look for newspaper clippings and heirlooms, and if you're really, really lucky, you might find a journal of an ancestor that will give you a hint into knowing their personality and what they did every day. So once you've done your place, you've got to go find someone else's place to go poke through. So this is where the cousins, the aunts and uncles, come into play. You want to find out what they've got. Have they got photos you don't have? Do they have certificates you don't have? You want to exhaust all those sources before you actually start going to archives and doing research. Interview your relatives. Do the older ones before they die on you and take all that wonderful family information and stories with them. If you don't have anyone older than you, then start with your younger ones. There may be nieces and nephews that heard family stories that you didn't hear and little pieces of snippets of information. And maybe there's some old neighbors and family friends who know all the gossip your family, so you want to contact them too. Ask about, even ask about heirlooms, china, furniture, crafted items. I have a sampler. Who knows what a sampler is? Oh good, a few. Young girls would be taught how to cross stitch and do fancy needlework. And they were encouraged to put samplers together to show off their skills to pr prospective mother-in-laws and husbands. Okay, I have one that lists my great-great-great-grandmother's birth date and the date she got married on it. It's wonderful. And here's something I didn't do when I started in my teens. I was chasing names and dates. And yes, those are important. They're the framework you're going to build your family on. But it's awfully boring. 
And you want those juicy family stories, so make sure you write those ones down. I didn't do that, and my grandmother is now dead, and my mother has Alzheimer's. It's gone. Paper forms, and again in your handout, I'll have places to do this, to download uh, forms from the internet if you want to do it on paper. You don't have to do it on the computer. Um, but you will have to get someone, if you don't have a computer, you'll have to get someone to download it for you. <laughs> this is what a pedigree chart looks like. If you notice, um, number one is the person you're starting with, and you're doing their ancestors. So the next to the right of that, father on the top, the father's always an even number. So if you look at that, you've got two, and then going back to grandfather, you've got four and eight. And the mother's father, Joyce Scott down there, she's an odd number. Women are always odd numbers. <coughs> Enough said. <laughs> okay, but her father is six, so she's, you know, he's an even number. So. You want to make sure you get the men in the right spots. You have to keep them in their place. Okay? <laughs> we always try and put dates and places. Because sometimes the place is the only way you can tell if you've got the right John Brown. Or the right Bob Smith. So, where possible, make sure you get the places as well as dates. Get their occupation, too. You want to get unique things that identify people. So, I was born Nancy Brown. 